Hey everyone, welcome to Amazon SageMaker AI Science Corner videos, your go-to location for deep data science and large language model content. My name is Pranav Murthy and I'm a senior Gen AI data scientist. I work in the Amazon SageMaker AI team. I love building intelligent and autonomous systems. In this video, uh, we'll dive into efficient deployment techniques using Amazon SageMaker AI with a special focus on quantization, quantized approaches to deploying large language models. To follow along, make sure you have access to a GPU-based Studio Notebook instances. If not, that's okay. You can still run these in SageMaker AI as jobs. So you'd still have access to the code and you'll still have access to all the processes. In this particular video, we'll cover the two most popular uh, types of quantization uh, methods and walk through how to deploy custom-tuned quantized model on SageMaker AI in just a few steps. To take a step back, probably there are two main approaches to large language model quantization. There's offline quantization methods, tools like uh, AWQ, GPTQ, and GGUF, some of the most popular methods, are used to quantize the model weights ahead of time. This means that you prepare and save a quantized model before deployment, reducing the spike size and speeding up inference right from the start. The second method is online or runtime quantization. Libraries like Bits and Bytes apply quantization dynamically at inference time. This allows you to use standard model weights and benefit from quantization without needing a separate pre-processing steps. Both approaches are widely used to make large language models more efficient for real world deployments, especially when running on resource constrained environments. For now, let's focus on two optimization techniques uh, and dive deep into that. The first one is activation aware weight quantization technique or AWQ and the GPT quantization technique or GPTQ. So let's take a quick look at uh, AWQ act activation of our weight quantization. What is it and what is it? what is the purpose that it's serving? AWQ is a quantization technique that focuses on minimizing the impact of quantization errors by considering activation statistics during the quantization process. It optimizes how model weights are quantized based on how activations behave in each layer, leading to better accuracy retention, especially for large language models. AWQ is typically applied offline uh, before deployment, producing a quantized model ready for efficient inference. This method enabled faster inference and smaller model sizes with minimal quality loss. AWQ is especially popular for compressing models for edge or GPU constrained environments. The second method we want to focus on is GPTQ or GPT quantization. GPTQ is an efficient post-training quantization method designed for large language models, especially the GPT family. It quantizes model weights after training focusing on minimizing output errors layer by layer for high accuracy. The process is performed offline, creating a static quantized model for deployment, similar to AWQ. GPDQ is widely used for deploying large models on hardware with limited memory, as it significantly reduces model size and speeds up inference. It strikes a strong balance between model compression and maintaining generation quality. I'd also like to do an honorable mention to bits and bytes from an inference perspective. So let's just take a quick look at what bits and bytes is. Bits and bytes is a library that enables runtime quantization, applying quantization to models dynamically during inference. It supports a range of quantization types such as 8-bit and 4-bit without needing to pre-quantize model weights. This allows users to quickly experiment with quantization and deploy standard models with reduced memory footprint and compute requirements. Bits and Bytes is easy to integrate with popular frameworks like Hugging Face Transformers. It's ideal for rapid prototyping or situations where pre-quantizing the model isn't practical. In the next few minutes, we'll learn how to quantize a model uh, with AWQ or GPTQ method. Uh, firstly, let's go over the AWQ quantization script first. So uh, top to bottom, what we have is a bunch of imports. Uh, there is a requirement for the AWQ uh, which is auto AWQ package, which you can uh, install from pip. Um, we'll take a quick minute, but let's just go through all of the different parameters that are available. Uh, and I'd like to quickly highlight how easy it is to uh, quantize a model with Hugging Face, where you just call uh, model.quantize. Hugging Face or auto AWQ makes it super easy for you to just load the model in, provide the tokenizer, and out 
you get the quantized model. Now let's just understand what are these different uh, parameters that we have available. The first is the zero point, which enables zero point quantization, improving range and accuracy of quantized weights. The second parameter to keep in mind is the Q group size. So it effectively sets the number of weights grouped together by quantization. 128 is always the default, and for most use cases, 128 works really well. Large groups can uh, improve efficiency, but may slightly impact accuracy. So something to keep in mind as you quantize these models. The next parameter to keep in mind is the W bit, specifically the number of bits uh, used to represent the weight. Most AWQ models are four bit compressions, so we recommend keeping eight to four bit, but if you need smaller footprint, you can go three or two, uh, but keep in mind that it reduces accuracy. The last one is the version. So you get gem M and gem V. Uh, it essentially selects a quantization algorithm, uh, one of which is optimized for batch, the other is optimized for speed. So in short, the script is fairly simple. You've got all of these uh, parameters uh, available uh, for runtime. Now let's just take some default parameters and then quickly quantize a model. So I already have uh, a model that was uh, fine-tuned upstream available to me. This is just a base model that I fine-tuned, a Lava 3 to 3 billion model that I fine-tuned using spectrum fine-tuning technique for about 10 epochs. And now I would like to convert this model into an AWQ quantized model so I can deploy it for inference. So this is what my script looks like. I have, I'm calling the AWQ model quantization.py. I supply the model.path, which can be the local path. Um, I provide the uh, quant model name that I'd like to uh, deploy it as. Uh, and I would like zero point enablement 128.4 and gem. And then finally the output directory to where I need or where I want this to be stored. I'm gonna remove this path and I'm just gonna add as V2. And let me go ahead and paste this in the, in the command line. So while this runs, uh, I already have a quantized model that's ready to go. So as you can see, all of the layers are being quantized. So AWQ is going layer by layer and trying to quantize and reduce the footprint of the model. While it does that, let's just take a quick peek at the, uh, the base model Llama 3 to 3 billion and the AWQ quantized model. Now, just from the outset, you can quickly see that on the top, this is the model that's available in Hugging Face. The model is almost five and a half gigs in size. Now, however, the same model post AWQ quantization is less than half. It's only 2.1 GB in size. So it's a pretty significant reduction in footprint. Now, how do you deploy this model? That's the important point. The answer is SageMaker makes it very easy. Let's take a quick look at that after uh, we run through the GPTQ quantization method as well. We took a look at how AWQ quantization works. And by the way, the quantization is about to complete, but let's just jump into the GPTQ quantization. It's similar thematically. Um, the script quantizes a pre-trained language model using the GPTQ method, making it sustainable for efficient inference. We know this already, but what are the key parameters uh, that goes into GPTQ quantization. Similar to AWQ, we set the bits. These, uh, this can be 4, 3, 2, similar to AWQ, uh, which controls the model compression and efficiency. The second is a group size, similar to AWQ. This is a balance of performance and accuracy. We have the calibration size, which specifies how many calibration samples are used to estimate quantization parameters, improving essentially the output quality. Lastly, uh, there is a parameter which is use v2, where you can use the uh, second version of quantization, which has shown some improvements, but this is completely optional. At a high level, what the script does is it loads the pre-trained model and the tokenizer, prepares a calibration data set. Here we're using 1024 samples from the uh, C4 data set to accurately measure how quantization will affect the model output. Now you can use any data set, even your custom data set, to uh, have the model evaluate and then compute the weights before saving the model in GPTQ quantized format. And then uh, the script configures GPTQ quantization with the chosen settings. 
non-stochantization process using the calibration data to minimize accuracy loss. Finally, saves the quantized uh, model and tokenizer for deployment. So the way we're going to run this is very similar to AWQ. Here we're going to reference the GPTQ model quantization.py. Um, once again, I'm using a fine-tuned model, which was fine-tuned using spectrum fine-tuning technique for about 10 epochs. And then I'm going to save uh, the quant model name with the suffix as GPTQ. And I'm going to select four bits with a group size of 128 and a calibration of 1024 samples. And then finally, the output directory effectively, I'll just use the root here. And this, it's, it's as simple as running this. Now, one more thing to keep in mind is you can go larger in terms of bits. You can go from four to eight, which means that you get slightly higher precision, but your model size uh, will be larger. So we now have our uh, quantized model ready to go. Now, the question you might be asking yourself, or I have been asking myself is, okay, I now have a model, but how do I deploy this and scale this out to many users that can leverage my fine-tuned model in a scalable manner? So my easy answer to that is you can deploy your model, any custom model on SageMaker AI hosting or SageMaker AI endpoints. And we'll just quickly walk through how that's done. So we have a notebook here. Uh, most of you know this. We import a bunch of uh, required uh, modules in here at the top. We instantiate, uh, we find out what region we need to host a model in. We instantiate the SageMaker session and we provide the role uh, which is assumed at runtime. I'm going to use uh, the uh, DGL inference serving container, which is very easy. Um, I just need to supply a few configuration components and DGL inference serving container does the hard work for me about picking up the models, uh, instantiating it, deploying it, getting it ready for inference. The way you would deploy uh, models with DJL uh, inference serving container is you just specify the ECR URI which is managed by AWS. So uh, if you know the URI, you can just directly plug it in. So I know the version that I need. I need the DGL serving, uh, DGL inference container uh, 0.31, with a certain CUDA version that I know it works for sure. But if you're unsure, you can also use SageMaker image URI retrieve function to actually retrieve um, for a given framework and the version you need. Okay, I'm going to name this model something unique that I know. So I'm going to call it Custom Llama Reasoning R1 Distilled with some date time. Now, the second thing I, I need to do is I need to upload uh, the model to an SC bucket. Because this is a private model that I own. I can host it on Hugging Face, which means that it's widely and publicly available. Uh, or I can host it in S3 and just allow my DGL inference serving container to just tap into S3 and pull the model for deployment, which is a much more secure way to do it in this context. So we upload the file to S3. Uh, this is the path that we're using. Now, the same path I'm gonna copy into the uh, environment configuration uh, that is used by DGL container for deployment. So I have the model ID. The model ID can be one of two things. It can be the path, S3 path, and DGL uh, container automatically recognizes what type of model it is, or it can be hugging face path, which means it pull it from hugging face hub. In addition to that, you can specify parameters like what's the max model length, how much a GPU resource it needs to use, whether you're enabling streaming, what is the rolling batch type, etc. Uh, there are a whole host of uh, configuration elements that you can set to get the maximum out of the hosted model endpoint. And then simply just deploy. The one thing you need to keep in mind is what type of instance you'd like to choose in order to deploy these models. Given that we've quantized these models and these models are just two gigs in size, you may be able to host them even on a, technically on a 16 GB GPU as well. But I'm using a G5 to extra large, which can say contains 24 GB of memory, uh, which is plenty for an AWQ model, which means that I can increase the number of concurrent requests and that single instant instance can serve so many users within my ecosystem. So once that model is deployed, it'll give me a new model endpoint. Now that may take between six to 12 minutes, but I already have a model that's deployed and ready to go. So I'm gonna go back to my SageMaker uh, studio and then I'm going to navigate down to endpoints. 
And then here, I have the custom llama that I pre-deployed uh, just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to copy the model name here, go back to my notebook, and then I'm going to attach myself to that custom model endpoint name. And then I'll instantiate a new predictor. You don't have to do anything else other than just declare a new SageMaker predictor. And now you're good to supply uh, your text. Now the one thing that you may have to do, may choose to do, is format the input before sending to G DJL endpoints. In this case, that's exactly what I'm doing. But at runtime, you can configure parameters like temperature, top P, top K, uh, max tokens, etc. Now, I'm just asking a simple question. Who are you? And what's 2 plus 2? And you can see that the model actually thinks through. And you can see it generated a bunch of tokens in a very, very limited period of time. So that's it. So this is how you deploy a model uh, for inference on SageMaker AI, whether it's quantized or base models. It's very easy. And we hope uh, you follow along with us. Thank you. Thank you.